Hi, I'm Terry Siani, and my friend Jim Jones is here with me from Casper, Wyoming. He owns Prairie Wind Decoys, the number one stop for waterfowl equipment. And of course, when you're hunting the darn things, they only seem to like to be hunted when the weather is horrible and the snow is blowing and it is 35 below zero with the windshield. Jim, why are you doing it? Oh, you know, this is, this is paradise for us. We just dress warm and uh, the mallards are here, lots of them. Late season mallards. And today we're going to show you how to make these things taste great. I meet so many people through the years when I've been hunting myself or when people come to the lodge or just talking to individuals and they get intimidated by the duck because they think it's too greasy or it's the dark meat and they're not sure what to do with it. And Jim has a wonderful recipe for blackened duck. And Jim, I'd love for you to share right off the bat just some of the field tips that are so important before you even get to this point. Mm -hmm. Sure, absolutely. <clears throat> Probably the main thing to do is uh, try and pick your duck while it's warm. They pick 10 times easier if you do it uh, fairly quickly. A lot of times we'll do it right out in the field. If you don't have time, you can, you can bring it home, but you want to do it quickly. And uh, that's basically, you can just take your, your hand and, and, and pick all the feathers off and, and rub the, the skin clean. The other thing for this recipe that I like to do is uh, take a look at your ducks. Maybe you got a limit of ducks and you got five of them. Well, pick, pick out the best ones to do this. Uh, ones that uh, maybe uh, uh, got shot in the head and the whole body is just completely clean. If you look at, look at this one here, there's, uh, there's no shot in it and uh, those turn out the very best. So then once the, the duck is picked, We'll take a little propane torch and we'll just singe off all the feathers. We'll cut the, uh, cut the joints uh, right at the bone. They're nice and neat. Kind of looks like a chicken. And, uh, do you keep a pair of poultry shears with you when you're in your game bag or your pickup for I, I sharp do. bones sometimes? I do. I do. It, uh, little, little shears uh, work great. Or if you don't have some shears, you can saw it off right at the joint. Uh, you, can, you can tell where to cut it and it makes it nice and neat and clean. So, uh, you yeah. so. know. I think another trick that is wonderful with ducks or geese is if you could notice how dry, there's no sheen to the skin. One of the things with the ingredients that Jim's gonna talk about is the salt. One, you're gonna dry your skin really good because you want it really crispy. You want that fat to render out. But when Jim adds the salt to this, he'll talk about marinating this overnight. Salt will pull more moisture out, so you're going to get more flavor and you're going to get a wonderful crispy skin. So Jim, tell me about the ingredients you want to do for this blackened duck. Absolutely. It's very simple. There's, there's four main ingredients besides the duck. We have uh, paprika, Worcestershire sauce, salt, and pepper. Uh, and then how much are you using? Uh, about a half a cup of, uh, of each except for the salt. I cut it back a little bit, use a quarter cup of salt. And uh, just throw it in a bowl and uh, blend it up and into a paste. I kind of call it a slurry. And it's, it's really easy. Oh, it is quite a thick oh, paste, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. And uh, then you take this paste and just rub it on the duck, inside and out. Uh, you want to get it uh, just completely covered both sides. Then you can you can take this paste and uh, and just just rub it rub it everywhere you can. And I'll throw a bunch of it inside. And I, I think it penetrates into the skin and into the meat. And uh, around the legs and the Looks neck. like you're going to get a lot of flavor out of this. Oh yeah, absolutely. You can get some in the in the uh, inside the cavity and flip it over and do the back. Now, do you actually want to have like a coating on it to some degree? I mean, not like a thick coat, but I mean, do you try to leave quite a bit of it on as well? Well, it 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 kind of marinates the bird and uh, you know, whatever happens with these four ingredients is magic. Uh, it'll take a duck, a mallard duck, 
and you'll swear it tastes like filet mignon. It is. I it, love filet mignon. <laughs> it is. It is absolutely fabulous. And do you like it more when you do marinate it overnight versus if you just did it for a few hours? I think it helps to marinate it overnight. Um, it uh, has a chance to work itself into the meat, uh, but if you're in a hurry, you can you can just do it, you know, as you go, uh, and it'll, it will still be good. It probably won't be quite as good as if it as if it sits on there overnight in the refrigerator. Now so, we also did do a couple ahead of time from yesterday, Jim. Of course, they've been hunting for a few days. And we do have a couple that have been marinating since yesterday as well. So this duck, Jim's going to show you how to do it as a marvelous appetizer when he cuts it a special way. The other two we're going to serve for dinner. So we are going to put our winter clothes on and we're going to brave just for you going out in that blasted cold and horrible wind and go out to the grill where it is 500 degrees so that we can cook this blackened duck just perfect. The, the pick duck is it seals the moisture in. And, uh, maybe I should take this one. This one's a little black, but it's black and duck, you know. Well, Jim just came back in from outside and braved the cold. Thank you. He did it for me. He was being a gentleman. Jim, why don't you talk about your duck that you just took off the grill? Okay, so here we have the, the blackened duck, and if you only have one or two ducks, you can serve them up as an appetizer. So I just want to show you how to cut them, and, and the key is to get a little bit of fat and a little bit of meat with each bite. So I'm going to kind of flay off the breast, and then I'm going to cut it into cubes, and then uh, we can stick toothpicks in it, and everybody can have a little bite. So, basically, I'm going to come like this. I should have put a wet paper towel or a dish towel underneath the cutting board and it would not have slipped on them. Okay. All right, and I will get some Q-tip, or <laughs> Q-tips, <laughs> I'll get some toothpicks. <laughs> oh, funny. I think the key is to to have the duck, you know, medium rare to rare. Well, it looks like you cooked it perfectly. And that way it's moist and tender. Well, I can't wait to try it. The seasoning that you had us rub it with uh, looks marvelous. Okay. All right, Jim. All right. May I offer you a oh, slice? Yeah. I'm going to try this little piece. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah. You know, it really does taste like filet mignon. Mm. No, it's wonderful. It tastes like steak. It does. If I didn't know that I had prepared a duck with you, mm -hmm. I would never have guessed that that was duck. Absolutely. Uh, and it's you like know, beef. when we mixed all the, the paprika and the pepper and the Worcestershire and the salt, you know, you look at it, you think, oh my gosh, it's going to be really strong. It's not. When this is cooked through, it's just this wonderful undertone of flavor. Mm -hmm. But again, moist, crispy, delicious. Good job. Too many people overcook duck. You want to keep it rare to medium rare, and then it's delicious. It is delicious. Go for it.